I literally just tried to record audio yesterday, and I'm starting to realize that the whole problem I had was that I didn't click on the right microphone setting. So yeah, I'm just a dumbass, I guess. I don't remember when my family got Netflix, but I remember getting those DVDs in the mail, which was always fun. And Netflix also kind of led me and my sister to watch a bunch of random hole-in-the-wall movies that you'd only see in the back alley in the middle of the night. I'll talk about all the random movies I've seen, but that's for another day. Now, I don't remember how I found this movie, maybe Redbox or something, but there's a movie called Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart, a French movie from 2013 by the same studio that brought us A Monster in Paris, which is a movie I absolutely love, by the way. I really need to talk about this movie. There's just so much about it, I don't even know where to start. I've written and recorded the audio for this video, but for some reason I scrapped it. But not this time, I'm gonna commit. This movie is based off an album by the French band Dionysus, which was later made into a book. I have a weird relationship with this movie. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it entirely. I do like some of the songs, I listen to the album occasionally. Also, fun fact, the song that I used in this old video is from this movie. I should really redo some of my videos. Now, if you ask me, the animation in this movie lives in the uncanny valley. I get that some animated movies tend to go for realism, but there's a limit. The characters' faces are way too human. Those... those eyes. They're staring into my soul! The story is about how a boy with a cuckoo clock heart who isn't supposed to fall in love, gasp, falls in love. That sounds great and all, if it weren't for the fact that our main character, Jack, is so infuriatingly stupid. And I get it, you know, Jack and his love interest are 14, of course they're gonna be stupid, but there are so many times where the thing he was warned about was proven right. Ugh, I'm getting ahead of myself, let's just get into the story. We start off in Edinburgh, Scotland. It's the coldest day on earth, and a woman is about to give birth. She stumbles into the house of a doctor, Madeline, who is one of my favorite characters. Isn't that delightful? A dead bird sticking out of your hair. And another little bird in there, if I'm not mistaken. Or I made some pancakes earlier. Do you fancy one? Best pancakes you'll ever taste. You can't give birth on an empty stomach. When Jack is born, his heart is frozen solid, so Madeline replaces it with a cuckoo clock heart. To survive off this heart, Jack has to live by three rules. Never touch the hands of his clock, control his temper, and to never fall in love. I wonder if that last one will be important. For some reason, Jack's mom just dips in the middle of the night, but good news for Madeline, since she can't have kids, she raises Jack as her own. Fast forward and Jack is 10 years old. For his birthday, Madeline takes him out on the town for the very first time, during which Jack wanders off at the sound of a barrel organ and he goes into the town square where he meets Miss Acacia. For some reason, everybody just refers to her as Miss, even though she's not older than anybody or of a higher status. But I'm just gonna keep calling her Acacia because I feel like that's a really dumb thing that they added. This is the song I made that cringy video to, by the way. And of course, it's love at first sight, and Jack's clock goes haywire. Madeline finds Jack and scolds him for being so careless. You could have died. Don't say I didn't warn you. Rule number three, did you forget? No. <laughs> Later on, one of Madeline's patients, Luna, tells Jack about a school she used to go to, and Jack, wanting to see Acacia again, thinks he's most likely to find her there. Madeline isn't too sure about sending Jack to school, but not for the reasons you might think. To school, going to school, it'll drive you up the wall. No, I promise. You'll be bored out of your mind. You'll have to read lots of books you despise when here you get to choose which ones to read, not to mention sitting for hours on end without moving. I know you too well. You'll hate every minute. But Jack convinces her, and it's off to school with Jack. He should have listened to Madeline. She had a convincing argument. It's because he's an idiot. If he listened to her at all, none of this would have happened. The school looks super depressing, by the way. Here we meet Joe. The school bully who also likes Acacia and tells Jack to forget about her because she's escaped abroad. So, all that was for nothing? Eh, pretty much. So, Jack is bullied by everyone for the next four years, and he's now 14 years old. It's his birthday again, and when he finds a birthday card from Acacia, which fell out of Joe's pocket, 
it fell out of Joe's pocket, so it wasn't Jack's. Joe picks a fight with Jack where Jack should have just given him the card back because again, it wasn't Jack's, it was Joe's. And during the fight, Jack's clock accidentally gouges Joe's eye. Ouch. Jack runs home thinking that he killed Joe. That's not how that works. And Madeline helps him escape from the police, telling him to look for a clockmaker wherever he goes. I don't know when he decided this, but apparently he wants to look for Acacia. There's this weird, creepy scene where Jack has an encounter with Jack the Ripper on the train. Jack the Ripper? Seriously? Why is he here? There are so many weird things in this movie, guys. Anyway, during the chase, Jack's heart got a little messed up, but lucky for him, he runs into George Millet, who is my other favorite character. Your Dr. Madeleine is a genius. The way she pieced all this together for you, it's, it's a labor of love, down to the merest detail. George fixes Jack's heart in his workshop in Paris. Unlike Madeline, George is super supportive of Jack's quest for love, saying he shouldn't be afraid of getting hurt. Now, you see, I agree with both George and Madeline in Jack's situation. But as you'll see, I agree a lot more with the latter. And so, George and Jack go to Andalusia, Spain. When they get to Andalusia, they find a circus where Jack gets a job working on a ghost train ride as a scarer. That's what they said, like... Like, his job is to scare people? Uh, yeah. And Acacia performs as a singer. I need to talk about the soundtrack for a minute. As much as I like some of the songs, there's a few that have really weird sexual undertones, which I wouldn't find weird at all if it weren't for the fact that THESE TWO ARE SUPPOSED TO BE 14 YEARS OLD! Your tongue, it shimmers like a prize Gazing into your eyes, I rise You make me complete I know where to press to make you laugh or burst and blaze I'll scatter butterflies wherever you lie Bleh. After Acacia's awesome performance, Jack goes to see her in her dressing room Her dressing room Cause that's not weird at all And she calls him out on it too but he gives her a bouquet of glasses and everything's okay. Smooth. Now, Acacia says Jack looks familiar, but for some reason he doesn't tell her who he is. Regardless, Acacia agrees to see Jack at his job on the ghost train, where he's apparently not too good at his job being more funny than scary. I mean, that's how they described it in the album thing, but not like in the movie, so I'm just gonna say that he is, uh, whatever. Afterwards, they spend more time together where Jack tells Akasi about his heart. He goes in for a kiss, but... No, don't make me. I can feel a powerful magnet growing in my tummy and pulling me towards you, but... My heart belongs to someone already. Later on, he goes to ask her about who she's in love with, and he thinks that she's talking about Joe. Insecure much? Akasia does say that she wants to be friends, and they go to George's movie later on. Film was still a new concept at the time. Now, it's important to point out that throughout the movie, Jack's heart sputters and goes haywire, occasionally smoking, which hurts him physically. His heart is physically hurting him. This happens most when he's with Acacia, and this is exactly what Madeline warned him about, and he's still going through with this relationship. Can you see what we mean when we say Jack is an idiot? After the movie, Jack talks about who Acacia is in love with. As she describes how they first met, Jack realizes that she's talking about him. That Acacia is in love with Jack. Woo. Unsure of how else to tell Acacia who he is, George and his... girlfriends, I guess, help Jack put on a puppet show of how he and Acacia first met. Oh, and Jack tried to kiss Acacia in her sleep. Yep. Jack and Acacia agree to run away together after her concert that day, and, like an idiot, he gives her the literal key to his heart, which he uses to wind up said heart. To, oh, I don't know, survive? You what? What on earth is up with this guy? That's like someone who has a severe peanut allergy giving their partner their EpiPen. Little do they know, however, that Joe is in town. 
Now at this point, the story will kind of vary depending on which version you get your hands on. Let's finish the movie first. Joe goes to Acacia and their exchange indicates that they're friends. She sends him birthday cards and Joe knew where to find her. Joe tells her about how he lost his eye and the three rules that Jack had to live by. Also, how the heck did he know about Jack's rules? As you can imagine, Acacia is not happy to hear any of this. She doesn't want to be the cause of Jack's death, but the way that she phrases her argument is really weird, saying that he'd make her a murderer. She also doesn't believe that Joe bullied Jack, so uh, I'll, I'll get into that later. Jack says that Joe's turning Acacia against him and that he's willing to risk his life for Acacia, but nothing seems to be working in his favor. Joe and Jack get into a fight which wrecks Jack's heart pretty badly. Acacia, now afraid of Jack, for some reason, goes with Joe back to Edinburgh. George takes a look at Jack's heart and concludes that Jack's best chances are to just go back to Edinburgh and be fixed by Madeline. On the ride back home, Joe tells Acacia that after Jack escaped, Madeline was arrested. Shortly after her arrest, she died of a broken heart. Realizing that she has the literal key to his heart, Acacia goes back to the circus, but by the time she gets there, Jack is already gone and George sends her back to Edinburgh to get Jack. When Jack gets back home, he learns of Madeline's death and collapses at her grave. Luckily, Acacia made it just in time, but before she can do anything, Jack throws away the key. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, his heart was pretty badly damaged. I don't know what good the key would have done. They share a kiss, and Jack climbs the snowflakes into heaven. And that's the end of the movie, I guess? Okay, let's just get into how the book ends. In the book slash album, Joe tells Jack that the reason he bullied him was because Joe is in love with Acacia. I mean, that was kind of obvious. Joe takes Jack's job at the ghost train and does a way better job at him, and he tells Acacia that Jack was the one who gouged out his eye. And when Acacia confronts Jack about it, they get into a pretty heated argument where he tries to rip his heart out, going into a coma in the process. Three years later, Jack wakes up with a new and improved clock heart, courtesy of George, who went back to Paris. Jack was being taken care of by a former lover of George, and she gives him a book George kept of his adventures with Jack. The book said that the clock heart wasn't at all necessary for Jack's survival, which obviously shakes him up, but he forgets about it immediately when he remembers Acacia. Jack apparently went through puberty during his coma, and he can't recognize himself in the mirror. Dressing up in a suit, he goes back to the circus to see Acacia, who still sings, and Joe, who still works at the ghost train. Everyone apparently thinks Jack is dead and has a grave set up for him and everything. So Jack and Acacia start a friendship and eventually become closer. After a few weeks, Jack decides that he should reveal himself to Acacia. When he meets up with her, Acacia is reluctant when she sees he has a box and says that she's in love with someone else who had passed away three years ago. When Jack realizes she's talking about him, he gives her the box, which contains his former heart. That's actually pretty morbid, what the heck? This does the opposite of what Jack was hoping for, and Acacia is furious. She says that because of Jack, she married a man she doesn't love and puts flowers on his grave every day. Okay, that kind of sounds like a you problem. You could have just chosen to not marry Joe. Acacia tells Jack that he's dead to her, and she leaves him, and Jack realizes that he lost her forever. There's an epilogue that says Jack is a ghost of his former self. He goes back to Edinburgh where Luna and Anna tell him that Madeline gave him his clock as a way of keeping him so that no one would adopt a strange boy and that a heart that can't tolerate love and anger would shelter him from life. In the album, Acacia got more famous before Jack gets into a coma and Jack becomes a wooden giant for some reason. Don't ask. There's... A lot of things wrong with this love story. The relationship between Jack and Acacia felt super one-sided. During the fight, Acacia either didn't know or didn't care that Joe bullied Jack, and if she has the whole, oh, but he's nice to me mentality, what the heck? You shouldn't associate yourself with those kind of people. Also, when Jack told her about his heart, she didn't seem to understand the severity of it, as though it was just a toy. <laughs> Fooling around with your clock, it's positively dangerous. You'll give someone an injury. You might as well take it off occasionally. I can't help it. It's not some toy. It's my heart. I get it, okay? 
A cuckoo clock heart is a bizarre thing, but it's a handicap. If someone had a handicap like that, you wouldn't think of it as a joke, would you? If you do, we'd like to politely ask you to leave. You could more or less compare this movie to The Little Mermaid, where the main character does something stupid for their love interest, but what makes The Little Mermaid work is that Triton, the one warning Ariel of the dangers, was more or less proven wrong. He was being an overprotective and arguably not the best dad, and he saw his daughter happy with someone who loved her. Plus, Eric was only part of the reason Ariel wanted to be human. She wanted to go to the surface anyway, and Eric only motivated her more. And, like I mentioned earlier, throughout this movie, Jack's heart would malfunction. Sputtering, gears popping out, smoking, it even got struck by lightning towards the end. Madeline kept warning him about things like this happening, and he ignored all the signs. If they wanted Madeline to be the overprotective mother who wanted Jack all to herself, they should have proved her wrong. At the very least, show Jack prevail over his heart. But instead, we're given the signs that she was right about Jack to not fall in love. And then there was Jack giving Acacia his key, oh my god, as if he wasn't any more dumb. The uncanny animation, the weird sexual undertones of the songs, and the idiotic choices of the main character gave way for a one-sided love story that was doomed from the start, and in the end, love was indeed what killed Jack. I'm not saying you should hate this movie. It's fine, I guess. 5 out of 10. Like I keep saying, I occasionally listen to the soundtrack. Maybe I'll use more songs for videos. But people like this movie. I wouldn't choose it on purpose, but if somebody put this movie on, I'd watch it. Would I recommend it? Kind of? I don't know what to say anymore. Just listen to the soundtrack. I didn't mention this, but in the movie, Acacia would sometimes spread out thorns like a rose. They don't explain it or bring it up at all, but I think it's pretty cool, like a little defense mechanism. Okay, quick announcement about my channel. The stats show that you guys would rather watch FMVs than listen to my stupid voice. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. And I just want to say that I won't be taking requests when it comes to FMVs. Or requests in general, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, the last time I took a request for an FMV, I did not have a lot of fun making it. I mean, the video is still up and it's doing very well, but I didn't have a lot of fun making it and I only posted it as a sense of obligation and and I wasn't too proud of that video. I'd rather, um, I'd rather put out videos that I had a lot of fun making and think that you guys would enjoy seeing. So if you guys wanted to ask me to make a certain FMV, I'm sorry, but I just can't accept any requests on this channel. I hope you understand, and I hope that you'll be sticking around for the ride. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, I'll be in the fandom zone. Bye! It's also kind of interesting that we just transitioned from a movie that I love to a movie that I can't stand. Oh man.